DUP haven't yet reached a deal. She needs the 10 seats won by Arlene Foster's DUP in Northern Ireland, but what do they want in return? issues around Brexit, uh, obviously around counter-terrorism, and then doing what's right for Northern Ireland in respect of economic matters. In the Commons, Labour's Jeremy Corbyn didn't miss the chance to crack some jokes at Mrs May's expense. I'm sure we all look forward to welcoming the Queen's speech just as soon as the coalition of chaos has been negotiated. <laughs> Theresa May holds her first meeting with a European leader since the election. Brexit is top of the agenda. I think there is a unity of purpose among people in the United Kingdom. It's a unity of purpose, uh, having voted to leave the EU, that their government gets on with that and makes a success of it. Mrs May insists that the Brexit negotiations will begin next week as planned, despite the political uncertainty. Also tonight... Inflation jumps to a four-year high, squeezing family incomes and outstripping wages. Our children are starving in a country with one of the largest oil reserves in the world. President Trump's Attorney General denies allegations he colluded with Russia in the election campaign. I have never met with or had any conversation with any Russians or any foreign officials concerning any type of interference with any campaign and Harry Kane scores a double in Paris, but was it enough to beat France? Coming up in Sports Day later in the hour on BBC News, it's now two defeats in four matches for the Lions on tour and just over a week and a half to the first test against the All Blacks. Good evening. Talks today between Theresa May and Northern Ireland's Democratic Unionist Party about enabling the Prime Minister to get a working majority in the Commons haven't yet resulted in a deal. Both sides, though, said the talks had gone well and an agreement is expected tomorrow. The DUP leader, Arlene Foster, has outlined her priorities, among them Brexit and counter-terrorism. The former Conservative Prime Minister, John Major, has added his voice to concerns about the implications of a deal with the DUP and its possible repercussions on the peace process in Northern Ireland. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, reports. They're all here, with new MPs, Parliament returning to its business. <laughs> the Commons Speaker elected, well, dragged by tradition to his grand chair again. But a government in charge? Not quite yet. Mr Speaker-elect, on behalf of the whole House, may I congratulate you on your re-election. At least someone got a landslide. <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May able to laugh about losing seats, so that but no, no deal in place yet that will prop her up. As we face difficult challenges ahead, let us come together in a spirit of national unity to keep our country safe and build a stronger, fairer and more prosperous future for everyone in every part of our United Kingdom. Yeah. The Labour leader delighted in throwing the Tories' campaign barbs back at her. Democracy is a wondrous thing and can throw up some very unexpected results. <laughs> and I'm sure... And I'm sure we all look forward to welcoming the Queen's speech just as soon as the coalition of chaos has been negotiated. Number 10's hoped-for deal with the Northern Irish Unionists kept Downing Street waiting. Even the resident cats involved in a stealthy power play. The DUP, natural allies with the Tories, seem to be enjoying their big doorstep moment. Are you ready to drive a hard bargain, Mrs Foster? Arriving for talks, willing in principle, would they sign on the dotted line? But time passed, and more time passed. The DUP chose the back door to leave. After nearly two hours of talks, it's the Prime Minister who's first to emerge. There's no sign of the DUP. I've been told the I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed, but there's no sign of a final deal. They're not exactly wearing their influence lightly. You can't blame this small party for seeming cock-a-hoop at their newly public power. 
even though their involvement in government is anathema to some. If I remember I vaguely, what steps we on here. I was on the right on Saturday. We need some more people over to the right. I think that there's been a lot of commentary uh, around the issues that we're talking about, and it won't surprise anyone that we're talking about uh, matters that pertain, of course, to the nation generally, uh, bringing stability to uh, the UK government uh, in and around issues around Brexit, uh, obviously around counter-terrorism, and then doing what's right for Northern Ireland in respect of economic matters. But relying on a Northern Irish party for a government pact is a danger, according to one former Tory PM risking Northern Irish peace and power sharing by appearing to take one side. I am concerned about the deal. I am wary about it. I am dubious about it. And the danger is that however much any government tries, they will not be seen to be impartial if they're locked into a parliamentary deal at Westminster with one of the Northern Ireland parties. Concerns shared by the DUP's rivals in Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin, who took a rare trip to Parliament today. This new arrangement is very unsettling and uh, people are concerned and, and worry of what it may mean and what promises will be given. Tonight, Theresa May in Paris trying to get back to business. But when it's hard to keep her papers in order, let alone her party, what options does she really have? <laughs> what we're doing in relation to the talks that we're holding, the productive talks we're holding, with the Democratic Unionist Party is ensuring that it is possible to, uh, with their support, give the stability to the UK government.